to d the project I'm working on right now, uh, this minute, uh, the rest of the afternoon before I go back to work tomorrow, is going through all the hardware. You know, things like these little side plate covers, things like these handlebar clamps and bolts, okay? I've got an old dog bowl from my boy Job. If any of y'all saw my triathlon videos, you met Job and rest his old soul. He's gone on to heaven. So I figured since I'm not going to eat out of his bowl, I'd go ahead and use it as a as a stainless steel wash tray. So um, I've got you know some metal parts in there soaking in gasoline just to uh, to get the grease off of them. And uh, after I do that. All these parts are gonna go in the tumbler. I bought one of those uh, little five pound tumbler kits at Harbor Freight. They're real cheap. You throw some medium in there. And the good thing about these is they do a very similar job to bead blasting as far as finish removal and cleaning and, and prepping. But you can plug it in and walk away from it and let it run for a few hours and it'll do all that work for you. So I consider that a blessing to uh, to be able to go get that. And I'm thankful to the Lord I can go pick that up and not have to stand in front of a bead blaster for hours and hours and hours and, and do that. Um, now what I'm perplexed about, and see this is a no-brainer. This, um, this aluminum plate, that's a no-brainer. That will go in the, in the media blaster. But these I'm perplexed about because I wanted to reuse the bearings. And because I wanted to reuse the bearings that's keeping me from wanting to put it in the media blaster so I'm gonna look at the media what kind of media it actually is it's not sand it's uh it's more granular it's a larger uh, it's not walnut shell they didn't have that and that was recommended to me for this purpose for this reason but let's see what I wound up with today let's see what we got we got I don't know if you can see that or not it's a quarter inch pyramid green unsaturated resin so I'm gonna shut the camera off use two hands get some of this out this is not a commercial for Harbor Freight so uh, get this stuff out and see what's going on with it and I may I may wrap electrical tape around the ends of these bearing caps you know I got, got two hands on the camera sorry but might take electrical tape around and just keep the bearings closed and go ahead and throw them in the blast in the in the in the uh, in the in the tumbler anyway we'll see okay guys this stuff's been soaking in there for a little while and I run out of room for a lot of this stuff so I got my little gloves on, keep the gasoline off my skin for a little while. It'll eventually break and rot through. And I just run my finger over to get most of the grease off. That doesn't need to be tumbled, but see this I will, see? See where it's starting to rust and pit a little bit? I mean, it looks pretty good now that it's cleaned up, but it's got some marks on it. So that's a good example of something that needs to go in the tumbler for this project. Okay, so this is what the hardware, the master cylinders, some of the little plastic tidbits, chain guide parts, there's a foot peg. There's what all of that looked like before putting it in the tumbler. Why am I talking so loud? Because this thing is loud! Goodness gracious, this thing is loud. When you when you run these tumblers, guys, you don't want to do it in the living room while you're trying to watch the football game. I can tell you that. Not that I'm a football guy. I'd rather watch a good sermon on YouTube, but you know what I'm saying. You don't want to be watching TV while this thing's going off. There we go. Let's see if that piece vibrated down and went under the media. Whoa, look at that. Oh my goodness. This thing's violent. <laughs> not only not only did the piece that I put in there vibrate down under the media somewhere, but all the stuff on the bottom made its way. Oh, yeah, there it is in the middle. All the stuff that was in the middle made its way all the way up onto the top. 
Look at that. Man, this thing really does vibrate and move stuff around, doesn't it? So, all right. We'll go ahead and let this thing run for a few hours then. And uh, a few hours from now, when we come back, we should have some nice clean parts. Okay, so these parts have been in there for four and a half hours. And after four and a half hours, this is what the stuff is coming out looking like. It's looking pretty good. By the time I soak a couple of these parts in acetone and get all this powder off of them, they're going to look pretty good. Now I'm just getting all the stuff off, rinsing it off in water. And once I rinse all this powder, you know these... When I'm done with the water, when I'm done just rinsing it off, it'll go in an acetone bath. And it'll actually sit and soak in acetone until I'm ready to take it out and dry it and paint it. For $50, this little tumbler did a good job. Hey guys, so these are the parts out of the tumbler. I've uh, started rinsing them off and getting all of the... Um, aluminum residue and steel residue and um, I wore gloves earlier in this part of the process when I had all the metal involved but I got it down got it down pretty good now you see how that water is not clear it's kind of opaque looking and that's uh, it's little microscopic fragments of metal floating around in there and resin from the from the from the bead blasting process of the tumbler I shouldn't say bead blasting, I should say the tumbling process, because I used a tumbler to do it. But I don't know if you saw in the video before how bad those springs looked, but look at them now. I mean, there's a little bit of pitting on them, but once I spray them with some galvanized paint, it'll be good to go. Ow, it's hot, it's hot water. There's what the collars came out looking like. So there's some pitting on them. Uh, you know, the tumbling's not going to take the pitting away. But they are clean, there's no question about that. So, here's the swing arm. Ow, hot. Here's the gookie swing arm plates. It gets all the chain lube all over them and all that stuff. So, yeah, we'll soak these parts in this acetone and swish it around and get all the water off, get all the moisture off. And then. When I take these parts out of this acetone, it'll be 99% pure and clean. And then I'll just let them air dry in my hand for a quick second, and then I'll spray them with that galvanized compound spray. It's, uh, and more importantly, be a little bit more, you know, corrosion resistant than regular paint. So that's why I'm going with that. But yeah, I would say it's uh it's a success. So yeah, here we are. I got my numbers on. It is two practices and four motos. We rode six times today, and she held together perfectly. Do this, you know. You don't need a lot of money. You need a little bit of money and a lot of hard work, and you can make it happen. So. Alright guys, God bless you. I'm going to get dressed for my next moto. And uh, we'll see you.